Hello everyone, welcome back to the Crawlstock Workshop. So what are we doing today? I um, I received my uh, Inura wheels in the post a couple of days ago and I've put them together with the um, Canyon Trail tyres which come with the kit. Um, I really like these tyres, find them nice and soft especially after a couple of runs and uh, you know pretty, pretty good in all conditions. The one thing I found when um, making these up was getting the uh, getting the beadlocks to go together was a bit of a nightmare. So what I made was this very simple little strong back. Um, just put an M3 cap head through the centre drive hole, uh, and then that sort of sat on the back as such, like that. A bit crude, but it it did the job. Um, allowed me access to the screws to fit them. Um, but when I was doing it, I was finding it was kicking to one side or the other and just generally being a bit of a pain. So today I thought I would try and make a proper tool to, to pull these beadlocks together. I do envisage changing these in the future. Um, so I'm probably going to have to go through the same um, problems again. So why not, whilst the weather's not very good and I can't get out crawling, make a tool? So my my idea basically is um, I'm going to machine a disc that, that fits on the back here um, and now I'm going to machine cutouts for each of the cap heads and I'm hoping that um, with the tool fitted it actually aligns it in the centre as well. So we will head over to the lathe first and we'll do a bit of turning and then uh, we'll do the machining of the cutouts on the milling machine. So the uh, material I'm going to be using for this is this aluminium bar. Um, two reasons, one it's it's quick and easy to machine and two uh, I've obviously got plenty of it. Now you can see that this bar is way too big for this lathe so I'm going to use another of my recently purchased tools which is this lovely bandsaw um, and I'll set that up and I'll just cut off the little bit that I need to do this job. So the first dimension we need to machine is um, so that I can fit it into my collet set in my milling machine. So we need a, uh, a diameter of 19 millimetres. Now I'm sure lots of you have probably used lathes before. Um, I use carbide tipped tools because they stay sharp for a long time. Um, they leave a pretty good finish and to be honest um, the tips are so cheap I do a couple of jobs with them and then I'll chuck them away. So, and you can turn them around so you get a couple of couple of goes out of them. And if you use the tip correctly, they actually can last quite a long time. Now this tool um, is quite flat. It doesn't have much of a, a rake on it. If you imagine um, when you're chiseling, uh, obviously the more you chisel in, uh, the bigger the cut you take. So, and this is this is more a tip for cutting harder materials. Aluminium's quite soft so we can actually get away with a tool like this. Now I don't know if you can see that, but the tip's actually raked upwards, so it has more of a chiseling action. And because aluminium's soft, um, you, you can get away with taking quite reasonably sized cuts. So for this job, we'll select that tool, and we can do most of the work with this, uh, with this one tool. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're going to clean all the faces up so that we've got nice clean faces to take measurements on uh, to get us started. So we've cleaned up the front face, so what we'll do now, we'll clean up the, uh, the side face here. Um, Free jaw chuck, they are self-centering, but um, they're, they're generally not very accurate. So. Uh, you always clean up um, both your faces where you can then you know at least they're parallel to the machine which is where the majority of your accu accuracy comes from so we'll go ahead we'll clean this up a bit we'll take some measurements and then we've uh, got to make a spigot that is 19 mil in diameter <laughs> Feed as well. 
So this gadget here um, is called a DRA, digital readout. So any movements that I make on the X or Y axis um, are recorded on here. So I can make pretty accurate cuts, certainly accurate enough for, for what I want, down to a, a matter of microns. Um, so, so very accurate tool. Uh, I've done a few little things on it to make it a bit more accurate. So it's not um, it's not probably to the standard of your average CNC, but uh, serves my needs and obviously um, cost a lot less. So we've cleaned this up. Uh, we'll take a few measurements now, and then we know how much material we need to remove to get down to 19 mil. So I take the majority of my measurements with a, a digital vernier like this. Um, you have to excuse my elbow being in the way because it's not the easiest position to get into but uh, certainly for what I'm doing the accuracy of one of these is plenty uh, so we're at 31.74 we need to get down to 19 mil so you know quick math we need at least 10 mil taken off of there um, we can certainly take one millimeter depth of cut on here um, no problem at all. So we'll get get into uh, ploughing some of that material off. Okay, so we've taken uh, five cuts at one mil, um, which actually it takes off two mil. Um, because you, you've got a rotating piece of material, it's actually taking one mil cut from this side, one mil cut from this side. So rotationally, it takes two mil cut. So we're down to 2167. So we need to take 2.67 millimeters off. So um, on, on the DRO, we actually need to take half of that. So what we'll do is we'll take a one mil cut and then we'll take the last bit in one cut as well. So we'll take a measurement here now, see what we're at. So we're at 19.7. So on the DRO, if I put in 35, half of, 37, uh, half of 70, um, then that should get us pretty much on the money. So, 1905 um, you get a little bit of deviation um, you can get a bit of deflection on the cut it can be down to temperature of the material temperature of your workshop etc etc so it's a lot of factors that come into it um, probably in the middle of summer when I set this up it will probably be perfectly accurate um, but we are I mean I'm outside it's probably about 10 degrees today um, although I've got the heater in the workshop that you can hear uh, the machine itself you know is, is pretty cold so it's definitely going to have um, different tolerances today that's why uh, you see these big machine shops they're, they're always climate controlled okay so um, we'll just get a collet and we'll just try it on there uh, and then if I'm happy with that then I can turn I can turn the work in the lathe um, and then we can make a start on actually turning the, the dimensions for the for the tool it, this is a six-sided collet block. Um, it's made up of the actual collet, and all this is is a, uh, a tapered. It's tapered on the outside, but it's parallel on the inside. Um, and what it allows me to do is to hold a piece of material in there that's round. Um, and this part with the six sides on, if I want to make, say for instance, I want to make a, my own nut, um, I can turn a bit of bar to fit in here then I can hold it in the collet, excuse this, hang on, that clips in there, screws together and does up nice and tight and then what it allows me to do is to hold it in a vise and I can machine, in the milling machine, I can machine a flat, turn it, machine a flat, turn it, machine a flat, turn it, machine a flat and then on this part that I'm holding I actually end up with effectively a nut, I mean I could do it as many sides as I want obviously as long as it's a division of six. Um, but I've also got four-sided as well if I want to make a square. So one tool that I made was um, this chuck key, which has got a square on the end. 
and it, it took me no time at all. I could set it all up in a dividing head, um, but it takes a long time to set up. I need to change the machine, etc., etc. So these collet blocks just allow me to, to do it very quickly. So hopefully, um, this will now fit straight over our spigot we've just turned. And there we go. It's a little bit loose, but that's fine. This is a 20 to 19 mil collet, so that hold in there nicely once I actually do it up. Um, and because of the taper, the more I do this nut up, the tighter this hole will go. Okay, so we've turned the material. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do exactly as I did before. I'm gonna face it off on both faces, so we've got, um, we've got a nice clean start. And then uh, we can start to take some measurements from the wheels um, and decide how we're gonna make this part. Okay, so we just need to take a couple of critical dimensions, uh, one being the outside diameter of the, the wheel. So we'll just do that with the vernier. So it's 27 mil, it's gonna be a rounded figure. They're not gonna do it as a, an odd size. And then that'll be 21.5. So what we need to do is, is turn a small piece um, that is gonna to, going to sit on the outside rim, but is also gonna locate on this inner rim. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we will do, um, obviously the, the 27 mil, uh, well we'll do 26, and then that gives us plenty of room around the tire. And then we will do, it's 21.36, so let's do 21 on the inside. So hopefully you can see that. This is what we call a chamfering tool. It's actually a diamond shaped tool. Um, and all you do is you, you bring it into 90 degrees to your work and you put a nice um, 45 degree chamfer on the edge. And as Blondie Hack says, he's one of the best um, machinery or machinist uh, channels out there to watch. This is what separates us from the animals. <laughs> So there we go, just a quick cut, um, but it leaves a nice finish, um, takes the sharp edges off the end there. Okay, so we have our 26 millimeter outside diameter. We've cut that. And what we need to do is make a small, um, small bit that is a smaller diameter to act as a spigot, so it locates into the back part of the beadlock. <clears throat> so a little bit, look a little bit like a top hat. Um, so what I'll do is I'll use the DRA for these measurements um, and we need 21 millimetres for the for the inner dimension. So what I'll do, I'll, um, I'll just touch the tool up against this face and then I can zero out and then I'll know my depths of cut. So I want to make this two mil deep um, recess. So I'll use my Y axis to cut into two millimeters. So I'll stop short each time, then the final cut will be two mil and uh, it'll make it a lot cleaner. And we need to take off five millimeters in total, so we'll need 2.5 on here. Keep our chips clear so we can see what we're doing. There we go. So hopefully um, we should be at two millimeter depth and then 21 mil inside diameter, 26 mil outside diameter. So let's take those measurements now. So we already know we've got a 26 millimeter outside diameter. Should have. Fingers crossed 21 there. So 2105 again, that's that's close enough. And then we should have a two millimeter depth. Now you probably won't get a perfect accurate measurement on this one because um, there'll be a slight burr on it. So it's 1.97 
Um, we'll just deburr that with a deburring tool and then fingers crossed we'll be on the money. Perfect, there we go, nice clean finish. Um, so next job is we need to do a three millimeter hole up the middle, which allows us to put the um, screw through. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually um, tap it. So we'll go and get our chart and we'll work out what size tapping drill we need for that. So a really handy tool for any uh, machinist is what's called a Zeus book. And this gives you loads of data that you need um, for doing machining. Lots of information about drills, about cutting speeds, um, lots of machinery information. But one of the most useful things for sort of the hobby modeler uh, is this chart here, which gives us all of the correct information for cutting threads, metric threads. So we want to do an M3. So this is, this is the metric uh, table. So we look down the table here for an M3. So there we go, an M3. And we go across and along across here, it says tapping drill. So we're obviously tapping a hole. So we need a 2.5 millimeter drill bit. Now, because I'm really lazy, um, I like to have everything organized and easy, easy to reach. Um, I've got a couple of really useful sets of drawers here. So basically this one's got all my nuts and bolts and screws in for my modeling. Um, and this one has got all my handy stuff for machining. So what I've got in here is, if you see um, up the top here, so I've got one mil, 1.5 mil, etc., etc. of drill bits. Um, they're, they're labeled accordingly. But down here, I've got drawers with M2, 2.5, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. And so if I'm doing an M3 thread, it's everything in this drawer that I need to do M3 threads. I've got taps, I've got a 2.5 mil drill, I've got a die, um, I've got different taps, I've got spiral taps if I'm tapping into a hole that um, is not drilled all the way through, you use a spiral tap and that looks a bit like a drill bit and the idea is, is that the swarf comes outward or I have spiral point taps um, which if you're drilling a hole that goes all the way through, you use one of these and it pushes the, the swarf out the bottom. Um, and these are a lot stronger because there's less flutes in them. So it's always important to use the right tool for the right job. So everything that I need to do M3 threads is in that drawer. So before we drill our um, 2.5 mil hole, what we wanna do is to um, use a center drill to mark the center so that uh, when we we go in with the proper drill, um, it, it stands a good chance of starting in the middle of the, uh, the middle of the workpiece. So again, I'm a bit lazy. I've got different chucks with different tools already set up. So I've got one here um, with a center drill already in it. So again, it just saves me time when I'm machining. So we pop that in, bring out the tailstock, clamp that up. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a mark where the center is um, for, the, for the drill to make it start. So if you remember I said um, for a blind hole, is what we call it, um, you use a spiral flute tap, so I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, looks just like a drill bit, but in fact it is a tap. So we'll put that in the chuck, and then we can start it on here, be nice and accurate, and then we can cut the thread um, by hand. So I'll just put a little bit of tapping sauce on here, just so the chips don't stick to the tap. What we'll do is we'll bring it in manually and we're just using a hand just need to tighten that in the 
chuck a bit. Um, obviously the advantage of doing it by hand, I can feel when it reaches the end. And what I tend to do is I'll go in a little bit with using the um, lathe and then I'll put a hand uh, tap wrench on there and I'll finish it by hand and then I can feel exactly um, when it's going to reach the bottom of the hole and I won't end up breaking the tap off in there. So we'll just finish it by hand, like I said I can then feel when it gets to the bottom of the hole and hopefully we won't end up breaking any taps off because that would mean um, starting again. So another little tool, um, just a chamfering or deburring tool so when you drill a hole in a piece of metal, often you end up with a burr. Um, you can just use this tool just to deburr the hole. It just makes it a bit neater. There we go. So one thing I need to decide on is the overall depth of this tool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a parting tool, which is basically, effectively, it's a knife for cutting, uh, cutting through. Um, and I'm going to cut it part way through so that when I'm machining the slots I don't have to machine so much material. It's much easier to remove a lot of material quickly on a lathe than it is on a milling machine. So I'm just going to eyeball this. Now I think probably 10 millimetres overall is going to be plenty. So we'll, we'll aim for 10 millimetres. Um, the reason for that is because it gives you a little bit to hold on to but also it will allow um, uh, 10 millimeters of thread to screw into so you won't end up ruining the thread. So similar to before, we'll bring the tool up to the face. I know that the cutting tip is two millimeters wide. So whatever I'm cutting, um, because I'm going from one face to the other face, I just need to add two millimeters on. So I gently bring it up to the face of the cut. Zero that. Now I can bring the tool out. And then I go up to 12 mil on here, because if you remember, we've got the two mil um, ledge and then eight mil, so that gives us 10 mil overall, plus the width of the cutting tool. So we'll go to 12. There we go, it's close enough. So I'll, this is a carriage lock that I'm just putting on here, and what that, st it stops any play in the machine um, with the, the carriage moving backwards and forwards when I'm doing a parting cut. Now two things when you're parting, one is you don't want to be going too fast because you'll get chatter and the other one is it's a good idea to use a little bit of lubricant. So we start about 300 RPM, a little bit of lubricant on there. See how we get on with that. And remember, I'm not going all the way through with this. Um, so we're at 26 mil. I'll probably go through, so we've still got about 15 mil left. Um, and then that way, when I'm machining, I haven't got tons of material to remove. So you don't need to go mad with this. Stop every now and then to allow it to clear the chips. And you can feel you can feel when it needs a little bit of lubricant as well. So I've got a fairly new cutting tip in here. Um, it does generate heat quite quickly as well because you're, you're cutting a it's a big cut, two millimetre wide cut is a big cut on a lady this size. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops of lubricant in here just because I'm just I can just feel it starting to to pick up a little bit. But feed it in nice and steady. And I can always put this back in the lathe and clean up the back. Very rare you get a perfect finish on a um, with a parting tool. But again, just noticing a little bit, grabbing a little bit. So there we go. We're going to stop there because uh, I don't want to end up with lots of chatter on the milling machine. So we're over at the milling machine now. Um, I have set up uh, the job in the collet, um, so we're, we're good there. And I've put the collet in the vise, um, so that this is obviously going to give us our 
first cut. But what we need to do is figure out where the center is. So we've got a great little gadget for doing that. So this great little tool, uh, it's called a wiggler or an edge finder. And it's, um, if, you, if you can see this end piece, this moves around. And what happens is you you move the the, uh, the tool up to the workpiece or you move the workpiece up to the, the tool um, and you'll get to a point and it will be spinning bang on centre and then it will just go past it and as it just goes past it it starts to wiggle off centre um, and you'll notice that and that will give you one edge and then what we do is we go up to the DRO we've got a much more sophisticated DRO on this one uh, and we can use it to work out halfway between two faces so at the moment it's spinning dead central um, you can actually use the reflection of the light to tell as well because the reflection of the light will be in a dead straight line and then as soon as you get to the point where it goes off centre there hopefully you could see that so what I then do is I go up to my DRO I select um, this axis which is the Y axis in and out I set it at zero I then move away from the work I move it round to the other side Yeah, it's not easy to see but take my word for it and then we do exactly the same so we work into the workpiece just kicked off centre so we go up to the DRO it's actually measured um, the OD plus half the width of the tool um, so then we select the half function and that tells us exactly where halfway is. So now um, I'll move the DRO back to zero. So I've worked out we need a uh, six mil cutter. So I'll go to the, the milling cutters and I will select the right cutter for the job. So we need a collet to actually hold the tool in, in the milling machine as well. So. This is the, the collets for that one. So this is a five to six mil. So we'll select that one. And these are the bigger ones um, for the collet um, set that I showed you earlier. So this is the, the milling cutter mounted in the collet. So we take this over to the milling machine and we fit this into the chuck. Now some milling machines will have a drill chuck on there. Um, but they're nowhere near as accurate and they don't hold it as tightly as this does. So we fit that in there. And again, this has a taper in it. So the more you tighten this, the tighter it grips. So we bring our DRO um, to zero and then we'll make sure that will make sure that we are in the center of the job. And once this one's set, we won't have to change this again. There we go. Um, if anybody's interested in, in this system, it's called Touch DRO. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it uses Bluetooth technology um, to connect between a device which is connected to the milling machine and the iPad. So I could move the iPad around. I could also fit a, another system onto my lathe at the same time and use it for both. Um, but it's 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 absolutely fantastic, simple to use. Um, and you can, you can do absolutely loads with it. So I highly recommend that. Okay, so there's going to be a bit of maths in this one, so bear with me. So we want to work out how deep we want to cut the slots, which are the bits that are going to allow you um, to get to the screw heads on the wheels. Okay, so the centre spigot is 12.5 millimetres in diameter, so I'm going to increase that to 13 to make it easy. Um, and it's 6 mil wide because of the 6 mil cutter. So that will leave a six mil slot for you to, again, be able to get access to the screw. It's a tiny screw. It will give you it will give you plenty of room. So we've got the 13 mil of the inside diameter and the 26 of our outside diameter. So we need to remove 13 millimeters. Now, because we're doing it over half because it's a, the, the diameter, um, 
then we just need to take six and a half mil cut and that will leave us with a 13 mil spigot in the middle hopefully that makes sense to you so so basically what i'm saying is from the center to the outside would be 13 millimeters and we only want to cut half of that so we've halved it to six and a half Hey, the milling machine's quite noisy so um, i'll probably put some nice music or something over it or me singing something like that just to to drown it out but hopefully um, you'll, you'll get the idea of what i'm doing so there we go it's our first cut so all we need to do is slacken the vise off turn the collet block to the next hole We go and then we just repeat that five more times so here we go here's the almost finished tool um, so I've done all the milling so hopefully you can see that so you can see the slots where um, it still allows you to access the screws now it might look like there's not a lot of material in there but you're not going to be putting force um, like this on there so it should be fine um, I might remake it I might do it with four mil slots but I wanted to make it as easy as possible to get to the screws basically so um, all I need to do now is get it back in the lathe, part it off, clean the back face up, we'll give it a bit of a tidy up and then we'll give it a try. Um, I'm not sponsored by Marion Do, but I do drink a lot of it and I do love it so if anyone's out there um, who knows anyone at Mountain Do, I'd appreciate some sponsorship from there, it'd be fantastic. So after all that, does it actually work? Well. Very, very basic. Um, hopefully you can see it there. So you can see where we've machined the step. So the step sits in the recess of the rim there. So it goes together very easily. Just put it on the back. An M3 cap head screw through the middle. Obviously this is going to go together a lot easier because it's all put together now. And then all you need to do is line it up with the, the screw heads. And obviously you would just um, pinch it down. So there you go, there's, there's the end result. Um, hopefully in the slots you can see the the cap heads that actually hold the two halves together. So all in all, I reckon that's a success. So thanks for joining the uh, joining me on that little journey making that. It's been quite fun. Uh, might have another go at making one, maybe out of um, plastic. I could probably make them a lot quicker. I've got Delrin rod. Delrin's quite easy to machine and it's quite tough. Um, and I could probably get away with a four mil slot in that as well. So might have another go. Um, so cool, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, giving you a little bit of an insight into lathes and milling machines as well. If anybody's interested in any more content on that, and let me know, because um, there's something else I, I really enjoy. Um, and uh, thanks very much. So please um, like and subscribe. It, it is really appreciated. Um, I have a target this year of getting over a thousand subscribers. So fingers crossed with that. And uh, I hope to see you out on the trail soon. Thanks a lot.